Welcome back to another episode of the Zealous Podcast. I'm Rocky Snyder, and with me today I have Pat Van Galen. And Pat has been training people of all walks of life and all ages for many, many decades. But today we're going to speak about training, conditioning those in the later half of their years. She and I are going to be on a panel called The Meeting of the Minds for Perform Better this coming Thursday. So I thought it'd be nice if we connected prior to that. You can always go check us out Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern for the meeting of the mind when going to performbetter.com. We're just going to jump right into the conversation. I hope you enjoy it. And why do you train? You train so you can live life to the fullest. I mean, you know, so that's what, what it's all. That's always my message. Train so you can, da 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 da, da you know. But. Yeah, for years, I just, I trained because I loved living in a gym. Yeah, yeah, just in the early years, I guess you'd say. But then after a while, you, you you kind of burn out on that existence and you realize, oh, what am I doing this for? And then then you start to go out and you you pursue those those uh, lofty ideas and mm-hmm. activities. And mm-hmm. and now I that's that's exactly the only time I'm in the gym is because I'm training for something. Oh, oh yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, yeah, the whole well, you've been in it like I have uh, for a very long time. It, it's it's totally evolving, which is a good thing, you know. It's oh, it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. we're kind of. I feel like we're still in the dark ages, but at least there's some light being shown. And the uh, people in there, I don't know. Yeah, I I sent you a note. I don't know what to call us. I just call just call me by my name and train me. Just train me. Forget the age thing, will you? Train me. That's just, that's good. Yeah. Get, because get over, oh, at 50, you should concentrate more on this. At 60, no, just train me as I am. You know, it gets annoying after a while, but, you yeah. know. Because so. everyone's going to have a different youth index, okay. you know, or whatever yeah. you want to call it. Right, I mean, but, uh, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah, it is. How old are you, Rocky? I, uh, honestly, my birthday was this week. I just turned 54. Excellent. My birthday is this month. Oh, are you a Libra? I'm a Scorpio. Oh, you're at the end of the month. month. So 29th, 30th or so? I'm 26th, October 26th. Yeah. So Very uh, nice. Yeah, it's it's great. But um, no, I, I've just been in the field since I got out of Springfield in 76. And I've just been, you know, I've seen the whole evolution as you've seen most of it. You know, Cooper aerobics, Framingham heart, <laughs> aerobic, oh, yes. aerobic, aerobic. You know, and then it just, it's all coming around now full circle, which is a good thing, you know. Yeah, how so? What do you mean it's coming around full circle? I think that, well, you're, I'm, I'm going to be 67 this month. So I got a few years on you as far as the cycle. But okay. it started back with the Framingham Heart Study and Cooper Clinic. Everything was, and Jim Fix, I don't know if you remember him. Oh, I know uh, Jim, yeah. Yeah, the complete, everything was running in aerobics. That was 1976. And then you might yeah. remember more of this. Then came strength training, but it really wasn't strength training. It was all about cosmetics, right? Yes. And then really towards the end of the 90s is when the functional concept came, came in. Thank God, which I was always, I'm like, I used to say, that makes no sense what you're doing there. You think you're going to ski better because you do that? I mean, no. I just knew right. that because I was a PE major. PE, you know, and if you know Tim Daggett and anything about PE at Springfield College, we did it all. Yeah, you and did. you know what? It's a funny thing, Rocky. There were no ACL injuries. <laughs> because we came in so fit from climbing trees. I mean, I was before Title IX, basically. Uh-huh. So... Yeah, we grew up, we grew up outdoors and it was just, we didn't have injuries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost like playground strength. Instead of farm strength, we had playground strength. And today exactly. they've got cell phone strength, which is oh much, much less. Oh, I, I really, it's really kind of sad what you see in the kids. And then they try to make up for it in sports and they don't have the basic agility, balance, coordination. They don't have any of it. You know. Hey, let's talk. I would love to talk about physical education for a moment. You, with your background in PE and all the years you spent, I, I just have a really hard time uh, because you know I spent some time with uh, Dr. Ed Thomas. And oh, oh my I, God! I love him. I love and, him. 
Travis, in, in fact, that's why I have Indian clubs in my I life. See those, I was just looking at the stuff. I see that little board. Oh, yeah. 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 Ed turned me on to the Indian clubs almost uh, 20 years ago, quite somewhere between 15 to 20 years ago when yeah. he was when he was a Perform Better presenter on a couple of years back. And, and the information he shared in terms of the exercise history of physical education in America just broadened my under, understanding and awareness of how absurd, and no offense, how absurd physical education on the whole is in American school systems, because we no longer, since the 1920s or 30s, according to his tutelage, uh, we no longer teach the education of the physical frame and physical body. Instead, right. it's all about sports and competitions. Right. And, and, and so many kids get left out because oh. they don't have what you just spoke of, coordination, balance, and so on. So, you know, I, I would love to talk a little bit about that. What, where um, do you I, think, I think, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think um, people forget that, especially, I, guess I, I, I guess I would say people who come into fitness forget about all other movement. And I, in my, my, my uh, I'm working on another course, but I have five pillars of what I call hardiness. The movement pillar is really three things. It's everyday movement, steps, move around, chores, labor, work. It's also leisure time pursuits, hobbies, fun, physical things. Could be sport, could be comp, whatever it is. And then there's the training piece. And in this day and age, if you don't move much and you don't play much, <laughs> the training thing is the only thing that'll fill the niche. But it's still, the movement sphere is huge. Our opportunities are huge, but we just don't take advantage of them. And I just feel like um, people who come into the fitness part of it or the science part of it, have missed that. It's just not even there. They don't even know. And unfortunately, over the past 50, 60 years, our entire movement sphere, I have a slide that goes from here to there. And then we're yeah. supposed to make up for it in, in, in the training. It's just not, it's just not to be. It shouldn't be. But there, the right. exposure has been boom, like that. Yeah. And kinda... I just feel uh, the, with the physical education point, I was at Springfield when they were shifting from, let's say the gymnastics training, there was no weightlifting really, you know, except for football. It was all about gymnastics and dance and how well they move. So they, they had us when, I mean, I, I don't know if anybody could even do the rigorous cur curriculum. Now you probably brought up on student abuse or something. I mean, <laughs> we had to do it all and it was, individual sports like gymnastics dance it was um water stunts and diving but then it was field hockey track and field we did we did it all and so we had i think starting out in physical education was a really great blessing at that time then i went back for the masters in uh you know it's based, it was basically exercise science cardiac rehab but that's when the science kind of came in it kicked out the real movement stuff there was heart rate minutes times per week duration percent you know which was very good. linear yeah yeah but what about all the other movement and see i was very fortunate i grew up my dad was a world war ii vet blue collar guy could do anything with his hands and so that's how we grew up he never seemed to go to college <laughs> you know so we skied, we skated. He was always making ice rinks in the backyard. And we were always doing something, but it was always just physical work, but also physical play. And we're, we're missing that. But yeah. Movement should be fun. Okay, you got to do the work in the trenches so you can do the other stuff the way we live, you know. But it's, um, did you know this? Fitness activities are now the most common movement choices. Oh, no. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So sad. I mean, I it, it's ironic that we're both fitness professionals and yet, and, and, and I know you're agreeing that, the, that, that that's really a sad comment. It, it, it really is. Well, first of all, it's non-competitive and, you know, and hey, some people hate competition. You know, I get that. I grew up with three brothers. It was do or die. So... <laughs> 
No, but I mean, competition was, we, we thrived on it. You know, who can climb the tree the highest? Who can throw the ball the hardest? You know, and it, it was always competition. But some yeah. people don't like that. That's fine. So then fitness classes, the Pilates, the bar, the wh whatever all the choices are, at least they're doing something. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in the in the northern woods of New England, basically, in the weekends. If we weren't in the weekdays being a kid, you just played outside, like you oh. say. But on the weekends, we would go whitewater canoeing. We would yeah. go hiking. We would go camping in the middle of the winter and cross-country yeah. ski into a forest, set up camp, and, and making actually making a log cabin at one year and, and doing it. all those things outside. Yeah. And we didn't get up to the, the northern reaches of New York and Albany, but we were on the, in the summertime, we were up in the northern woods of Maine on the border of Canada, going down those rivers and so yeah. on. That's, those are the, the pursuits that we really enjoy. So to hear that fitness is the most common pursuit, it's, it's a sad state of affairs where we have decreased in our ability to move as a society yeah. that now we have these gyms and studios that have to offset the sedentary it's, existence. That's what it is. It's a counterattack against sedentary women. And what do you think about the, I think it's absurd, but I'd love to hear your opinion about the fact that the more sedentary we get, the more overweight and deconditioned we become, the more we pursue higher and higher levels of intensity that somehow completely counteract the fact that most of us just don't move enough. So on a, on, for one hour, a couple of days a week, we're just going to go to the red line. Yeah. Oh, uh, um, I, I say this, it's, it's actually kind of on my website. It's like, if, if you want to change the way and the pace at which you age, we need to change the way we live. You know, three hours a week. All right. It's probably going to keep you out of the grave early. It's probably going to prevent you from becoming frail if you don't get injured in the process. But it's just a quality of life. I mean, it's, it's the mindset. I always tell people it's, it's what's in here. What do you, how do you want to age? You know, what do you want to be doing when you're 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, or hundred, because you know what? Medicine's going to keep you freaking alive. And women, especially if you think that you can do bar and Pilates and stay really strong and really mobile, you're out of your mind. No, no, that doesn't work. So, so what I, get, do you... I get a lot of heat from women because I'm like, oh, it's great. Walk. Yes, for sure. Do your yoga. Do you, do you want to stay strong? Do you want to stay powerful? Do you want to be able to teach your grandkids how to ski when you're 85 or whatever? You know, no. Medicine is going to keep you alive in the chair, period. And women are frail for 16 years before they die on the average. Mm. 16 freaking years. So they're not do really you want living. To live long and die short, or do you want to, you know, die long? That's what it's all about. You know. And the minimum guidelines are just to keep us from dying early, to not be frail, to hopefully our bones don't fall apart. You know, but it's it's not enough. Not the way we live today. And back to your question, high intensity stuff, yeah. Oh, that's great three times a week, but then you're a freaking cripple the next two days after. You know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's insane. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah, so. that, that desire for pain, that it's almost a sadistic desire, wouldn't you say? It is, especially in males. Yeah. Especially, yeah. I think in females, they're more, um, generally speaking, unless they were in athletics or grew up like I did, you know, uh, they're more, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to get hurt. Or it's all about how they look, you know, calories, mm -hmm. calories, calories. And, what, uh, what I typically tell my clients uh, is that at the end of each session, you should have feelings of inspiration. You yeah. should be feeling like I want to go do something now. Yeah. Other than I don't want you to feel like, oh my gosh, I got to go home and lay on the couch. I'm, okay. I'm just... I am just exhausted. That's the last thing I want to do. I mean, we're here to inspire, to, right. to create the bubbling energy up inside somebody yeah, that has remained when they leave. That, exactly. You good when you leave. Oh, what's the rest of my day going to be like? Exactly like, yeah, totally. Yeah. 
I think you're, you're, there's definitely a male female thing there, but um, no, it's okay. I, I, I did what I had to do today. Now it's over. It's my one a day, you know, uh -huh. cod liver oil. I got to work out, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I've seen so much over the years. I'm blessed to have seen it all and gone through it all, but it's, it's, it's all this. It's a mindset. You know. Well, you've you, like you say, you've been accumulating tremendous amounts of knowledge, experience, information over the years. My first encounter with you was down in Long Beach at the Perform Better Training Summit. I think it was three, if not four years ago. And and uh, I sat in on or not sat in. I I stood and participated in your hands on uh, for for the course or for the, the lecture, I guess, hands on that you were giving. It was yeah. wonderful um, because you had everyone moving in in chaotic patterns, shall we say. It oh, wasn't this oh, I linear. Yeah, it was, um, I'm trying to think what the title of that one was. But yeah, it was more about movement than training. It was re very reactive, if I recall. Yes. Yeah. And it was wonderful because yeah. there was not a, there was not a frown. There was not a, like this, oh, focus, concentration kind yeah. of, uh, it was, it was much more lively. It was uh, fun and enjoyable and you got to explore movement in three-dimensional space i mean how much better could that be right there with a group of people the interesting thing i found also is that everyone moved so differently and some <laughs> moved with more efficiency or literacy sure. shall we say than than others um yeah so it was that was just a joy now i'm curious how did how did you get i always like knowing how people got to become a presenter like when when did you start doing it and when did you get into the perform better family okay that is an interesting question um now remember when i was uh out of when i first was a pe teacher i also had to teach health uh -huh. so believe it or not rocky i was very shy in front of groups hmm. unless it was something very physical and I, yeah. but if it was speaking when i became a teacher you have to speak you know and it was high school kids you know so but then when I, um, uh, I went back grad work, came out of grad work, and then I got involved 10 years, I was in corporate health, fitness, injury reduction, health promotion, all speaking. So that just gave me more opportunity there. And then, um, let's see, then I moved overseas to Singapore. We were all over the world, so I was doing continuing education in Australia, China. I was kind of grassroots in China. This is back in the 90s. And Hong Kong did a lot of uh, Asian fitness conventions and things like that. And then when I came back, the whole functional thing was really brewing with Boyle Cook, uh, Gary Gray, that, that whole functional thing was brewing. So I just sort of, I, I actually did a nine month intervention in Hong Kong for a PhD, but I never published it. It was phenomenal. It was all functional training for postmenopausal women. The date is incredible. It's still in the box. We moved 34 times. So I never could like, yeah, I couldn't, you know, if you're working on something, you can't walk away. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, so the functional piece really made sense to me. I'm like, this is what, this is what it's all about. And then what I did, I got involved with the International Council of Active Aging. And I think this is my ninth year presenting for them. And uh, it was all on basically functional stuff for adults. Um, but I was always more not, I was more on the movement end of it, the, you know, agility, balance, coordination, because I felt pretty good with the strength and the power. And the, I felt real good with that. So then I, I uh, sent Mike Boyle a, um, an email. I said, I just did this presentation for ICAA. I bet your staff would really like it. So I went and did something. I think it was either on bone or falls. Uh, it was one of those. And uh, so um, then he told Chris, yeah, yeah, this, she's a, you, you should invite her. So that's how I got involved with Chris. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I think they, they were realizing at the time or Chris was that, you know, all these people from 20, 30 years ago are now aging and you still, it's, it's the same as they say recipe, but you just gotta, you know, you, you, you have to just tweak it, you know? So yeah. based on what people want to do, well, look what you're doing. You do it all. You're coaching, training, teaching, playing, working, all the above. That's, that's what, you're active. 
Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, prior to COVID, we had a contract with our local hospital and they have this kind of, it's, it's their flagship program where unfortunately there aren't too many hospitals, uh, at least in California, I'm not sure about across the country, who have like personal enrichment programs where they offer it out to the community. And some of the things they were offering were people that were living with Parkinson's and yeah. we, we took over exercise for people living with Parkinson's, yep. senior strength conditioning, we developed, mm -hmm. redeveloped the program, put it in yeah. place for them. And it's wonderful, but at the same time, I really don't like the title senior know. fitness in fact we have this class in our facility we call it the bridge class i didn't I want did. to put like some type of metal like silver or platinum or yeah, you yeah. know you know what i'm saying like yeah. i don't want to pigeonhole people just strictly by their age into nope. this group because totally. believe it or not i know you know pat but there's probably some 20 or 30 or 40 year olds that actually would do better in a class developed for that other Totally. demographic, so to speak, right? So totally. how do you get around that instead of saying, and of course, you know, we're coming up this this week, uh, Thursday, we'll do the meeting of the minds with Perform Better and the listening audience can go to performbetter.com and, and just click on the yeah. link there and and it'll be you, myself and, and two other individuals doing yeah. a little kind of forum uh, talking about senior fitness. Now, you and I were like, oh, yeah. it would sure be nice to get, what, what other name would you like to say in place of that? Can we put parenthetically? Well, you, you'll appreciate this because do you compete in surfing or anything? I will. I've been known to. We'll, we'll just say that. And what do they call 35 plusers? Masters. Masters. Yes. I kind of like that term in a way. Master this, master that. But um, I've, I've steered away from senior. Even now, the term active aging, people don't like that because they're thinking physically active only. It, uh, it's spirit, mind, body has got to be going. That's how you age well. But I don't use senior. I've used masters. I've used... Um, uh, I like your stages. You use the third stages. stage. Yeah, because that's very, you know, the third stage of life is, it, it can vary uh, just based on your career and your, if you have kids because that kind of determines things um i was a late mom i didn't get married till i was 34 and uh then my kid so my son is he just got married so i was a late mom i had my last child at 39 which is that so probably should have started earlier might have had three yeah <laughs> but my so wife and my i did the same thing is a little different where you look at um other people who have, still have kids in high school closer to my age so you know but it's your, what you did for your livelihood, which people should never stop. You know, you retire, you don't, you rewire, you don't retire. That's just not a good thing. Change, do, do something different. So you, I'm, I'm rambling, but the most important thing to keep is your reason to get up in the morning. That is it right there. Purpose, meaning, relevance to your day. When you lose that, not good, not good. So do you help people find their purpose? Yeah, I do. And How? it's very, it's indirect. It's indirect. In what because way? You don't, well, let's say we have a new client. The, the first thing on my health history form is not their age, not their medical conditions. It's what do you like to do? And what do you want to be doing for the next 20 to 30 years? How do you see yourself? It's, I've got all the medical stuff is over here. Now, I, I don't focus on that. I want to focus on what enhances your life, your family, your purpose, your reason to get up in the morning. And so that's a matter of getting to know them because let's face it, when you first meet people, you don't really know them. You know, you're, you have to develop a relationship with them. You're not getting into all their personal things and things that bother them. No, what are your hopes? What are your dreams? How do you see yourself depending when they come in? 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, because kids born today, about 50% of them are going to make it to 100. That is wow. Amazing. Yes. So our life expectancy is huge. But if you're going to spend 20 to 25 years in a freaking chair, <laughs> not because, I mean, hey, things happen. Murphy strikes. There's injuries, there's illnesses, there's viruses. But if you've neglected yourself 
your likelihood of sitting in the chair for 20, 25 years is, is huge. So got to get off your ass. <laughs> I mean, any, anything, anything, just move. You know, some people will, my father, you'll, you'll, you know people like this. He would not have set foot in a gym. <laughs> no way. No. no. And he lived to 94. At the end, he would ask me, like, give me a few exercises for this and that, because I still want to get out there and play golf with the guys. Got, went through two pacemakers. So the big downfall of the pacemaker is he had to change his golf bag. But this is what he did. <laughs> I mean, the guy had emphysema, right? He was an auto body guy. World War II, they smoked Lucky Strikes forever, right? He quit, but he still had lung damage. So mountain biking, he figures out, well, if I take the chair lift up, I can still come screaming down, but I can still mountain bike. Ah. So it's, it's when do you accommodate or assist? In other words, oh, the stairs are getting a little hard now, so I need to downsize to a flat. No, maybe you ought to train a little more so the stairs are easier. There's nothing wrong with you, you know? It's this, it's this, yeah. And I grew up in a house where it was like, if you don't do, if you don't use something, you're gonna lose it. Whether it's your brain, your hands, your toe, whatever the heck it is. And that was kind of his benchmark. So he had that in me, you know, he, that's how he was raised. So it's not about acquiesce and give it up. It's about, okay, let me rethink this a little bit. Um, I still like to mountain bike it. Maybe, you know, now that I'm 80, maybe I should get an e-bike. What's wrong with that? You're still out playing, you know, the e-bikes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like, don't be such a hard nose for God's sake. You want to go biking with your friends? They're 20 years younger. Get the darn e-bike and get out there. It's a, it's this. I, I, I don't know how else to say it, Rocky. You have it. Yeah. yeah. You, no, you I, I tell people. Yeah. Stop moving, start dying. It's just that simple, right? Yeah. It, yeah. And and you see it in some of the clients that you've uh, or or family members or friends where there's just the the fire in their eyes starts to just be extinguished and mm -hmm. and they stop moving and then instantly the aging process accelerates. Oh, oh. and and you know that reason to get up. Okay, I'm gonna go meet with Rocky today because you know I've got a wedding coming up. Of my grandchild and I want to be able to dance. It's it's about how you want to live your life. I mean, hey, if we were all farmers and still mucking stalls and, and throwing hay bales around, we yeah. wouldn't need gyms. We might need a foam roller. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, Pat, I think that the, the best gym would be exactly that. Like people buy a membership to come to a farm and muck stalls Seriously. and they bale hay. And yeah. they go out and they clear the back 40. I mean, yeah. how amazing would that be if we actually had farm gyms? I, I'm going to throw it out there because I've, I've had a lot of ideas like Grey Cook Bar. I kid you not. Like, you know, that Grey Cook Bar with the cable system. Yeah. I had something similar at about in the year 2000, developed this kind of yeah. bucket handle and put it on a cable. And yeah. I just put it off to the side. We just use it here. And then he goes out and patents it. And I'm like, oh, missed opportunity. So there's going to be a farm gym that comes up. Somebody's going to yeah. listen to this and go, oh, that's a great idea. He's not doing anything with it. I'm going to run with it. So whoever's doing that, good for you. No, anyway. I, it, it's just the nature. But yeah, we're trying to replicate, replicate life. And yes. unfortunately, as you said earlier, it's the way our environment is. Everything's so cushy and comfy and safe and sterile. My God, if you don't want to fall down, you got to get out and have challenges. Hey, let's talk about falling down. Because of course, well, you know, a big one of mine. it's huge. So tell, yeah, what are your thoughts about like falling down, fall prevention? And, and do, are we really preventing it or are we preparing, you know? Right. What do you I use the term? I use the term fall resistance. Can you stay up? So you are go. you resistant to fall? And, and basically, as you know, uh, and this is where I think our, uh, our profession, maybe we have strength, endurance, cardiovascular, all that stuff, but you got to be able to move in your environment of choice. So I do agility training, balance training, coordination, sort of the fun stuff you saw at that workshop. That is part of every single one of my classes. I change it up. And, uh, but I encourage people hike. Hiking is not smooth. 
up, down, bump, slump, slope, go play golf, carry your bag, stand, press, keep, the, the thing is, um, Rocky, don't stop. That's my message. And if you have stopped, okay, we're going to have to build you back up. But don't stop. Oh, I'm 50. I should stop down to see Why? Because if I fall, I probably can't get up or I'm going to get hurt. No, no, you try and say you can. It's, it's just my main thing is don't stop. But if you have stopped, then that's our job to try to build them all back up. So Good that's, point. Just don't stop. Do not stop. Unless you're pay, playing, you know, football or hockey, collision sports. Yeah. You know, or heavy duty contact sports like basketball, where you have no control over your opponent. They can, yeah, I get that. But still, if you're training for it, so I try to keep people up. And then, of course, I have this thing I call it break, break, and brace. Can you put on your brakes? Can you brace the fall? Can you break the fall? So once you're down and you hit the ground, can you take the hit? You know, it's the same thing as in football or collision sports. It's just not the same exact kind of training, you know. But if you're going down, I mean, I had a helpful guy on the ski slope last year. Older man, great skier great skier because i happened to be going down behind him and he fell and he didn't move so uh, i went over and i'm like you all right oh yeah i'm okay and so could not get up so he mm. still had the skill but he didn't have the strength the power the mobility to get up once he went down so yeah. that's the thing if you're going to keep doing these things you better be robust enough to do them that's how i look at it yeah so fall, keep... no, fall, the worst thing for fall to, to resist falls is to, to live, work, play in a very sterile, smooth, static environment. No stimulus. Right. Nothing in, yeah. nothing out. Yeah. Get off of the man-made surfaces also. Right. Totally. Get into right. some chaos. Look at what you've got. Sand, water, yeah. waves. Yeah. You know, I often use the example of, of uh, fly fishing. That's big here. Okay, it's not the fishing. It's walking down the rocks and standing up in the water as it goes. That's balance. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, the the outdoors is the perfect stimulus. Go figure. I think that's and, where we came from originally. I don't know. <laughs> and for women, a lot of women need to dance. If they're not gonna do anything else, dance and lift some do some kind of resistance training but dancing fantastic for the brain and the coordination and all the cross patterns because uh, uh let's face it uh there's a lot of women that they don't do outdoor stuff <laughs> yeah very good point they don't they didn't grow up with it they're uncomfortable with it um so dance get some movement so mm. i'm always a proponent of dance always and I'm not the greatest dancer, believe me, but I'm just saying it, it because it, it stimulates the brain, multiple uh, lobes of the brain. And uh, for those who really live indoors and maybe walk outside, you know, do some something to get you and keep you strong and dance. <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, so uh, just thinking about your environment, in Big Sky, Montana. I mean, you just walk outside your door and you've got it there. You can be traipsing down the hillside on, on these yeah. hillocks and so on and, and walking all over the place and having to watch your footing. But what about the people that are in the urban environment? So the ones that aren't near the beach, that aren't at the in the woods or, or yeah. what, what do you recommend? Well, um, what I've done with in some of those situations, especially if if they really don't even have any aspirations to take any of those kinds of vacations, because um, I would set up obstacle courses, all kinds, every, every tool you possibly have in your repertoire of stuff, you know, from aerox pads to hurdles, anything they have to step over, step under, crawl under, uh, the Dyna disc, anything where they have, that gives them a challenge, anything, and it's never the same. Never moving stuff around. You know what I'm saying? You set it up one day and then you change the order a different day. Anything like that. I, I actually had a class like that back in uh, Williamsburg. And uh, um, 
oh, it's a, it was a, it's a blast. It's kind of like what we did with the, you know, playing around. But no, it's, and it's a great warm up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so that's, that's what I've done. That's what I've so done. So just prior to COVID, maybe a year or two before, so, you know, 2017, maybe or so, um, the, the hospital that I was teaching the classes in, it was an old rehabilitation facility that was closing down and they were going to be relocating so it was like a ghost town in that building but there was one area that was kind of like a break room and but they also had a treatment table the size of a bed in the same height off the ground but there was a kitchen area and a bathroom area it was almost like somebody could live in this kind of studio apartment so we developed a whole kind of fitness regimen in that room so it was basically what could you do you know can i put things up in the cupboard can i bring them down can i reach underneath the the bed and grab some things and then and then put them somewhere else Perfect. and well ironically enough then covid hits and we have to do exactly that online with our clients because they couldn't get to the gym and exactly. they didn't have exercise equipment so what do you do you develop programs that are based on the environment they have. So we still have on our cable systems out in the studio, we've got these two cans of vegetables that are just on top of the, of the cable system itself. And people are always going, oh, why do you have garbanzo beans and black beans on your cable system? I'm like, well, for one, it's a reminder. Right? Two, it's like a trophy. Yeah. And because it showed people, we went for months online. We're using yeah. a broomstick, a chair, the floor, a countertop, and a couple cans of vegetables with a gallon of water in the jug. And Perfect. that's it. It's like, hey, you're actually doing, talk about everyday living and conditioning yeah. for it. It's, it's beautiful. And Rocky, that was perfect because where people get in trouble with falling is the transfer, transfer from high to low, from yes. sit to stand, from floor. It's all about putting the movements together. And you gotta reach a certain way, or you have to bend a certain way and twist a certain way to get your ring that you dropped on the floor. I mean, yeah, yeah. So you yeah, spot on, spot and on. We've got uh, we've got a few clients that really do not want to get to the ground. Yeah. Because for one, it's embarrassing yes. for them to coordinate and negotiate their way down, but even more embarrassing because they know don't know if they can get up off the ground. So a big part- We have to keep that skill. We, we do. Yep. You're absolutely right. So we, we make it so we've got crash pads, you know, gymnastics oh, yeah. pads that are soft enough where they can manage their way down. We've got stall bars on the wall so they can climb up using that. But you've okay. got to create strategies. If you're home and you're going to be, a lot, of, a lot of people are independent living, right? And they want to stay living independently. They don't want to go into assisted homes. Well, then one of the things that you're going to really need to carry on through life is the strength and ability to get up off the floor and yeah. to know that you can get down there safely too. So in terms of like program design, I'm mm -hmm. not going to get them on a bench and do a whole bunch of dumbbell exercises. What good is that? Unless they're going to be a competitive weightlifter or power lifter. I want them on the floor. Totally. You know, you know, this, the, the, um, from the age of zero to two, the, the skills we learn as an infant and we roll over and then we, we got yeah. on all fours and then we crawl. I go back to those. We need, we need to fight to keep those for as long as possible. We should be having Elton John in the background singing the cycle of life from Lion King right now, because that's exactly what we're that's talking exactly about. What There's, it is. You know, our life reverts back to those elemental things that we learned as toddlers. Yep. And, and so why shouldn't we do the you same know. thing? Honestly, we should have toddlers and those that are in that category of third stage, advanced third stage, yep. they should actually be working out. They should be workout partners. Oh, I, I agree. I mean, we, we, that part is, well, it's part of an education process uh, just because people think, well, I don't really need to get down on the floor. Um, or I'll, I'll just say to people, dust your baseboard. But there you not go. The extension handle. Yeah, you know what? You, you can do that. You can still do it. I mean, it's like, oh, that's physical work. No, and see, that's what you were saying about staying in your own home. home. Stay in your home and maintain your own home. Don't you know, hire the local kid to shovel. No. Don't hire, hire the local kid to walk your dog. No, unless you physically can't. Yeah, get and out and mow your own lawn. Yeah, yeah. for God's 
I remember uh, Tom Plummer, Thomas Plummer. I know Tom, uh, yeah. You know Tom. So yeah. he was, he's hilarious, of course, yeah. right? And he's hes talking about the absurdity of all these circuit machines and health clubs. And he's like, you know what? Instead, don't don't be just sitting there and, you know, he's just, he's very, uh, he oh, uses a lot of colorful words. A lot right? of F-bombs. Oh, so he's throwing F-bombs. F-bombs around like, what the hell are you doing? Just lifting your legs up and down with a crutch. Tell you what, I'm just going to take your purse. I'm going to dump all your shit on the floor there. And now you go ahead and pick it up. And he's like, and as soon as you put it in your purse, I'm going to dump it over there. And you're going to do yeah. that. You're like, that's real fitness. It's like, you got to get down on the ground and pick stuff up and you got to put it back down. What are yeah. you doing sitting on upholstery seat, just lifting your legs up and down? That's, that's bull. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's hilarious. No, I mean, it, 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 the big thing is really go back to movement because we've pretty much decimated movement. Decimated. Yes. Everything yeah. is supposed to be so convenient. And now we've got, you know, the text necking and, and the, the phones and the, screens and the oh my god it's it's overwhelming yeah as as much as i like to look at research i realize that there is a delay in the information that's coming out in research compared to individuals like yourself who have the boots on the ground that are doing the work that isn't going to come out for another 15 years because that's about what we're talking about right 15 year research delay yeah so so the things that you're talking about now we're probably going to see in 15 years time yeah. facilities that start to to mimic exactly yeah, I, what you're doing. I think we're going to see we're we are not going to recognize aging in 20 years. That's a good thing. I, gosh, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. And um, the, some of it's on the whole nutraceuticals and what they're doing in geroscience as far as repair and regeneration there is still nothing that can replace movement. I don't care if you have the most perfect diet and the best new nutraceuticals in the world, you don't move, sorry. Yeah, it would, it would be nice if there was, uh, rather than an age component in terms of measuring somebody, the activity component comes together or maybe marry them together. Mm-hmm. Like are you, it, the average active 35 year old yeah. are, you know, is, is that where you are in your life? Uh, yeah. You may be chronologically 60, but where is your youth index? Where is your, That's where right. is that age adjusted for activity? It's coming. The testing is coming because the, uh, the biomarkers, you know, all the blood work and everything that's saliva, urine, feces, sweat, that's coming. It's, it's totally coming down the pipe. But once again, as you know, Rocky, you can give people all the information in the world and you're prone to this disease. If you do these steps, you can basically avoid the whole thing. Still got to take the steps. Yeah. And I think and we can, we can, they're not easy. we can fold in the insurance corporations that as soon as they see that their profit margin is going to rise up, the more people move. I yep. think we'll start seeing, and we already are to some degree, you know, oh, I think the, so. yeah, you've got programs which are, are, you know, silver sneakers being what it is. It's still a valid attempt to get people to move. Right. And, yeah. and it encourages I mean, with the insurance covering it. It's, it's a fabulous way of getting people to keep going. Listen, um, in the beginning when you're young and dumb in a profession, you, you sort of maybe poo poo certain things, but I feel like, any program that can get people moving safely and doing more than they're used to doing, thumbs up. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I, it's just, but for a lot of people, oh, well, now that I'm 50, I need to slow down. Hell no, you ramp it up at 50. You ramp it up at 60. Because now you're more what they say, you know, time affluent. You got time. Do your training. Then do your uh, consulting. Then do your charity work. Then do your chores. It, it's yeah. It's it's this. Yeah, I'm like, that's great. Okay, <laughs> we could we could keep on going. In fact, we are going to keep going. We're gonna, we're going to go uh, this uh, Thursday. I believe it's October sixth, yeah. and it'll be Perform Better's Meeting of the Minds, talking about training the third stage of life. It will be titled Senior Fitness or Senior Training. Yeah. But you know, and I both, we're gonna we're gonna secretly kind of call it something else. But well, I, if, I told Chris, Chris, I said to Chris, it could be your first question. What's a senior? Should we even use the word? There you go. Yeah, that so would be a, a bad great, thing. I think it's a great icebreaker. And I, I also think that we as coaches need to continue to coach and train young people. 
Yes. And bring yeah. them together. Like the gym I'm at here is called Moving Mountains. It was an old CrossFit gym and the gal who runs it now. Um, it's more, I would say, trend to play out here in Montana. Um, uh -huh. So it's all, it's all ages, but I feel that uh, we need to not separate ages. And the more, you know, that 60 year old guy is training alongside a 30 year old guy in a group session. Okay, maybe there's a few modifications there because it's still the same, you know, same buckets. Uh, it's just, it's inspirational for both. Yes, it is. Yeah, it definitely is. That's yeah. what we have. We've got, honestly, teenagers working out next to people in their 70s in the same that. group. It's and just so that, and if we want to change perceptions of aging, that's us doing it for the younger ones. Like, holy crap, Rocky's still on that darn surfboard. Pat's up there on the, on the blacks, you know. So Excellent. That's, but we, we can't separate if possible. And granted, there's, there's people that have common conditions and things, but still, Certainly. we don't want to separate. It's just not a good thing. No, I good. agree. So here's, here's a time where we can just talk about how people can find out more information about the work you're doing, plus the products of DVDs and, and other programs that you offer. What's the best way to get, uh, get more information? Well, I have a website and I will admit I'm not a techie, but I do have a website. You can kind of get a good feel for what I do. Um, I've got a presentation for uh, International Council of Active Aging November. That'll, I'll put that on link. I'm on LinkedIn and you, let me take that back. I'm on LinkedIn a lot. Instagram, I kind of dabble, but I'm on there. Um, I don't do the, any of the other ones. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm also working on a course. It's a 12 hour course. Um, it's called Cardiac Rehab Fitness Specialist for MedFit. Uh, it's a MedFit group. But rehab stands for um, Restore energy, hardiness, aspirations, and benchmarks. Oh, I like that. So, yeah. So it's really about reimagining, redefining, re reworking the whole aging thing with people who have cardiometabolic issues, which is just about everybody who walks in the door. Yeah. <laughs> so I do that. Um, and I write articles for a local paper here that's online it's called the Lone Peak Book Lookout. Um, but I, I would say I'm very much a just kind of a hands-on person. I, I still Zoom clients from New York. So I coach those got ladies. And then I coach down here, you know, live. And Excellent. I have a couple lifestyle clients too. So, but I'm not full throttle personal training anymore. I did that for years. I'm more into the teaching and um, educating, you know. As it should be. It really yeah, is. But I, I never mean... want to lose my, in the trenches. Never. Because no. when you stop coaching, you're not sharp. Good point. You've exactly that. Keep, even if it's two sessions a week, you got to keep sharp because you got to keep your eyes, the coaching eyes on, you know. And if you don't do that, and I, 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 I uh, actually do a lot of the classes with the people, so I'm coaching, teaching, group acting, the whole thing, and it's a blast. I love it. I absolutely Excellent. Love what I, I love what I do. It's when you can see people change their life you know that's why we do it yeah 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 well i look forward to next year when we go back to live events and I we know. get into those training summits and uh, hopefully yeah. we'll be presenting in the same city and we'll get yeah. to hang out together so yeah. this has been fun so rocky do you usually present in long beach i that's where i was scheduled to prior to covid so we'll see what happens this year as they kind of shuffle the cards a little bit, but yeah, um, yeah, that's typically it. A little, you know, because well, the proximity is only hours for me. Yeah. Well, if you're ever this direction and visiting your old stomping grounds in Yellowstone, let me know. Oh, I will. Do Thank you, you so much. Do you still ski? I'm, we, well, I'll say I cross-country ski. I love growing up cross-country skiing, yeah. but I converted to snowboarding. So don't, don't hold oh, it against me. Oh, no problem. As All long right. as you don't cut me off. No, 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 no. I'll just be, I'll be carving turns behind you. Just, you'll be my rabbit. That's what it'll be like. <laughs> well, that's it for another episode of the Zealous Podcast. I want to thank Pat 
Van Galen for coming on. And if you want a little bit more of what we were talking about, training those in the third stage of life, well, you can join us as well as John D'Amico and Dr. Emily Spleekel this Thursday, October 7th at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, of course, noon on Mountain Time at performbetter.com, where we'll be having a meeting of the minds talking about exactly that, training those in the second half of life, shall we say. And if you miss out on that, don't worry, you can pick up the Perform Better app, which has all of the previous training summits and presentations on there for free. And while you're thinking about it, don't forget, just go ahead and connect with me on Instagram, Rocky underscore Snyder, and subscribe to Zealous, and we'll see you next time.